So today we are on the 4th of June, the last day of the Cold Refinery series <coughs> for lessons. Uh, I'm going to talk about automated testing. Uh, later on, uh, Radwan will talk about modular code development before we conclude around 12 o'clock. <coughs> and uh, uh, I'll We'll talk about automated testing in 90 minutes and we'll get a break before Radwan comments on modular code development. So if we then step into the program for automat automated testing, uh, I'll <coughs> briefly talk about why we test and give motivation for writing tests. Um, I'll step into the concepts around testing, around different types of testing. Uh, then you will do an exercise for 20 minutes. Uh, hopefully we will have a time for a short break after that. Um, then I'll walk you through the, uh, the large exercise where you do uh, enable continuous integration testing on GitHub with GitHub Actions. Um, and when you're done with that, we'll uh, have a conclusion, concluding session for five minutes. So that should be of approximately 90 minutes. Okay, so well, let's talk about the motivation first, why we test. So here, here's a pretty strong <coughs> um, view. Uh, untested software can be compared to uncalibrated detectors. Um, before relying on a new experimental device, an experimental scientist always establishes its accuracy. A new detector is calibrated when the observes uh, when the uh, when the uh, scientist observes its response to known input signals. Um, and then uh, the results of this calibration are compared against the expected response uh, simulations and analysis using software should be held to the same standards. Um, so that's taken from, uh, that's a citation of Catherine Huff, which has written the book Testing and Continuous Integration with Python. Um, so uh, in previous workshops, we have discussed this, uh, some uh, uh, Thinks this is too strong, and others are uh, agree. Uh, but we can <coughs> take a, a look at uh, some things that has happened um, uh, with uh, research software, where where testing obviously has been helpful. So if we look at this uh, researchers final bug in Python script, right, which has then affected hundreds of studies, we will see, um, we will see a Twitter message from one of the uh, uh, scientists written the software. So <clears throat> here is a Twitter message, huge bug uncovered in computational chemistry software. <clears throat> and we see that uh, there is something has changed in the operating systems that makes a uh, a sorting of files differently. Um, so this has, of course, been uncovered by test. But, but if we look at them, what Patrick Willoughby says, he says, uh, really great find by Riley and Professor Williams. When I wrote this script six years ago, the operating system was able to handle the sorting. So uh, that's a pretty uh, amazing comment that you're able to say, state that what I did six, well, six years ago, this software worked. I mean, if, if somebody came back to me with something I did six years ago, I probably wouldn't be able to tell whether it was my fault or the operating system. So, but we, we will see that with the, with the enabling automatic uh, testing, which we will do later on, it's possible to verify that something you really did uh, several years ago uh, worked at that point. So, um, so, the, so, um, 
testing can be very helpful for you uh, to find uh, so so you can kind of verify that this really worked um, uh, a time ago. But here <coughs> here is a typical Python uh, code uh, with a, uh, a uh, function with an accompanying test where we see the uh, Farnet to Celsius function and then it's used uh, in a tested testing uh, setup uh, which then verifies uh, the function. But uh, what also uh, is interesting is that you, we see how the function is supposed to use. So implicit in, in the test here is also kind of a, is a documentation, a real documentation how, of uh, how the function is, is used. So you, you will later on write in Python a, a similar test and, and see how uh, a, a test tool with PyTest, which is used in this case, uh, uh, works. So, <clears throat> and um, just to answer why we're not comparing directly all the digits with the expected results here, uh, we are using floating points here, and, and floating points can give uh, different um, um, numerical results depending on operating system and hardware. So we assert that we have an expected uh, accuracy and not uh, not uh, <coughs> not a specific result. So um, tests make sure that uh, the functionality that we have uh, intended and functionality is preserved. Um, as project grows, it becomes easier to break things uh, without noticing immediately. Um, and some of you experienced this with Snakemake, that something broke there uh, with the commit on, on Snakemake uh, a few weeks ago, which then uh, hurt us as users. Testing helps uh, detecting errors early. Uh, interpreted dynamically typed imperative languages need to be tested. Uh, and it's similar for uh, compiled languages, though the compiler catches some errors. So testing is essential for research software because we care about the reproducibility of scientific results and because, um, because uh, derivative research and programs depend on research software. Program testing can be used to show the presence of bugs, but we can't use it for showing absence. We're, our program will never be 100% correct, um, but mostly correct. As I said, it helps us uh, <coughs> helps us to see how uh, a function is supposed to use. It's a kind of implicit documentation that follows along the code. So it makes it easier for others to verify whether the code has been correctly installed. Um, and users of your code uh, publish papers based on results produced by your code, and they can verify that, that the intention of the code is, is correct, that they're using it correctly. And your peers need to be able to reproduce your published uh, computational results. Um, and test is helpful in that way as well. Um, as your visibility grows, you may get others to work on your code and tests make then it possible to refactor the code. And by refactor, we mean that you need often to um, modify your code uh, um, to, to change how it behaves without uh, changing the output or input, but uh, changing it perhaps the algorithm or or the way it's uh, uh, the flow of the code, um, and this uh, for <coughs> for making it more readable or making it more simpler. Um, so, um, uh, uh, yeah, and with tests, you verify that your changes don't break the intention of, the, of, of your function or, or, or classes. 
code is unsustainable without runnable test. Um, and well, we have a term in the software world called legacy software, which is software which you're depending on, but which you don't really touch because you are not sure how it works. And uh, the way to deal with legacy code is to is to act uh, is write tests to, to to become acquainted with the code but but you really don't want to be depending on legacy code because you you're not able to verify that changes on the, on a software like that uh, and don't break the code yes i mentioned the documentation part um, and it's easier for external developers to contribute to a project uh, when there are tests so here <coughs> we're seeing somebody that definitely need to test uh, their suit and it can at least if you're working with legacy code you need some armor like that yes so uh, as complexity grows, uh, tests uh, help you, uh, and it also test guides you towards a more modular uh, code structure. And of course, with tests, there is also good tests, and there are uh, less good ways to do it. So here is uh, here is the, the last example. Here we have uh, a lot of side effects and. Uh, <coughs> And global variables that uh, that uh, influence the test, uh, and it's a less way to do this. Okay, so <coughs> we'll go to the uh, to the <coughs> concepts part. Um, but things to think all, uh, we think through is. Uh, or <coughs> what happens if not uh, if not all tests are in uh, or when it, it's how you would trust the code when it's uh, not passing uh, so and uh, and if you see that all tests are disabled then also you have to be careful let's see here so <clears throat> what are the different tests, types of tests? So we can re really look at tests as a kind of pyramid where you have uh, unit tests as a button and, and then regressions tests as an integration test uh, higher up in the pyramid. Um, here we see uh, kind of test, a physical test, where you at least have made a new alphabet, but but uh, at least you get some letters correct, A and uh, K and R, S, Y, Z. So, um, and uh, this goes for, it's a, it's a good illustra illustration for uh, how we should treat tests as well, that it's uh, better to have some Test that runs than uh, than perfect uh, tests for everything. <clears throat> so um, we typically write unit tests, which we saw well, with this um, Fahrenheit to Celsius function, which uh, which is executed very frequently, um, like each commit, and uh, and then we have. Um, larger tests uh, suites which are run through the night if uh, or um, <coughs> or uh, yeah when we do uh, kind of um, when we do um, make new versions uh, um, in parallel to the tests in itself we can also have we call you know, also use assertions for doing defensive programming. So here we see a Kelvin to Celsius function where, where uh, we assert that some input, that the input is uh, uh, not uh, negative. Um, 
but this is not a test in itself it's assertions that follows the, the function uh, and and are used in uh, our code um, I mentioned the unit tests which we have also had se uh, seen um, which is a good documentation of the capability and dependency of a, of a module uh, integrations tests that's uh, that you take all the different parts of your code and, and, and try to make them work together like uh, if you have a car um, you assemble everything and see if it uh, starts and, and you're able to drive uh, regression tests <coughs> are um, more a suite of tests where which you as your code grows and and you find errors and you write tests for isolating finding those errors and solving them you keep uh, a portfolio of tests that you run frequently so that um, don't, those old errors don't uh, creep in uh, arrives again or or uh, um, start popping up again so so it's a kind of uh, you make sure that solve role, solve problems or solved errors uh, remain solved <coughs> um, so this is very important uh, to have as you're developing a larger code base and and you is issue revisions or or new versions of a code base Then we have the concept of test-driven development, which is more of a developing philosophy than just test in itself. Um, here you start to draw, to start your development with writing the test first, and then you uh, write the code to to uh, um, to fulfill this the first test uh, so th this is kind of uh, also uh, if you're writing a set of functions you you kind of design the um, how the functions are called first by writing the tests and then you implement <coughs> the functions so you keep on doing this in uh, cycle um, where at first the, the, the test breaks and then uh, you make it uh, go uh, go green or work and then uh, you uh, the test and the, the implementation of the function drive it out drive it drive each other so you use unit test which is uh, to to guide your development um, which can be uh, very, very, a very, very good way of uh, writing code. Um, but it takes some time to, to learn and to, but it's an attractive philosophy. Then we have uh, continuous integration, uh, which is uh, tests that are automatically run. Uh, typically, when you commit something, um, you will see this. As an automatic workflow on, on GitHub uh, later today. Uh, so, this makes it possible for the mainline maintainer to see whether a modification breaks a functionality uh, before accepting the pull request, for instance. Uh, code coverage is, uh, uh, is something that measures how well the code is tested. Um, so uh, it, it docu uh, if ideally you want to have tests that cover 100% of your code, uh, that's often impossible. But co code coverage will tell you how much of your code and which uh, paths through your code are uh, traversed and, 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 and tested. Um, testing can become very time-consuming 
not only because your code grows, but also because <coughs> because um, uh, you want to test all types of combination platforms. Um, or if you want to test uh, a Python um, on different Linux versions on with different Python versions, uh, the the number of uh, the volume of tests grows pretty large. So <clears throat> while you doing development, it's typical. It's very typical that you mark your tests, like um, um, which is done with this PyTest uh, version here. Uh, so you can so you can call uh, as just a subset of your tests as you uh, as you uh, run the test uh, to reduce the the, the volume of tests um, to just what you're specifically working on now. Um, yes, so uh, good practices uh, which you will practice in a few uh, few minutes is test before committing, fix broken tests immediately, um, do not deactivate tests temporarily, Think about coverage, um, go public with your testing dashboard and issues and tickets. Test controlled errors. If something expected to fail, test for that. That means exceptions, um, for instance. And uh, create benchmark calculations to cover performance critical modules and, and monitor timing. And make your tests easy to uh, run. So the Example above here is is kind of too complex. If you uh, need to write this uh, for every second minute, uh, but then a make test, for instance, would be uh, much more efficient. And and uh, with a lot of different programming languages, it's possible to set up a terminal with a kind of monitor which runs the test frequently for for every every file update. Uh, so uh, so when your test then passes, it, it will become green. So uh, here is some uh, literature, no, it says free software development, commenting out all tests, out failed tests. So uh, not something O'Reilly would be behind, but uh, it looks, looks like it. Okay, so that's... Um, um, that's um, the motivation and the concepts part. Um, we will now go to the exercises. So there is uh, two exercises. Uh, one <coughs> where you, you write a pi test, and and then there is a second one where you. Uh, when you're done with that one, uh, you write a hook uh, with the same test uh, and install this hook in your Git repository. So the <clears throat> you can work for 20 